Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This all, this all feels worryingly Stalinist with a massive picture of our face behind us. So um, do, do bear with us on that. Uh, we would like to talk today about creativity, kids, and stories. Um, but before we do that, we'd like to do a little warm-up exercise. Yes, we'd like yeah. you to join us in a little uh, warm-up exercise that we like to call the circle, circle of, of trust. trust, guys. We're going to yeah. get quite relaxed. We'd like you to sort of move your shoulders around a little bit. Come on, everyone, everyone needs to do this. It's the end of the night. Let's have some fun. Yeah, okay. let's just mix it let's up a little bit. Maybe put your fingers in the air. Just really explore the creative yeah, energies it, in it. the air. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this is an exercise we like to call the circle, circle of trust. Circle of trust. Okay. Please just... Put your hands down by your sides. Reach for the person next to you and grab them by the, the hands. <laughs> the hands, grab them by the balls of their hands. Not, not their hands, hands not, not their, their hands, balls, but the balls, balls of their hands. hands. OK, guys, let me see you joining hands now. That's very good. Yes, all the way along. Joining Come on, hands with each it. other. You're Let's on a you over there. for God's sake. I mean, it's very well lit in here. I can see you're not joining hands yet. OK, guys, please, everyone, repeat the sacred chant after Brother Robin. Very good. Now we move to the second level of the circle of trust, not the most important level, but still a very important level. I would just like you to look to the person to your right and simply say, I trust you. I, I trust, trust you. you. I would now, now like you to look to the person to your left and say, I'm sorry I missed that. I was looking to the person to my right. I'm, I'm sorry I missed that. that. I was looking, looking to the person to my right. Ha, 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 ha. And now, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. we move to the third level of the circle of oh. trust, the most awesome, the most climactic, the, the most, most incredible, incredible level. level. Can I have an oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Please repeat the sacred trust chants after Brother Robin. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh. oh. Mm-mm. Les Denis. Les Denis. Keith, check wine. Keith, check wine. Oh. Oh. Ah. Ah. Mm. 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 Okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah. The so, circle well of trust well is being fulfilled. Charlie! Mm -hmm. My notes. There they are. Just gotta help my uh, poetry. <clears throat> We're all in this together. So. We're all in this together. <laughs> Said George Osborne, wiping the foie gras from his lips. <laughs> then George went home and spooned the rest of the foie gras into the bin. That bin eats better than most people, thought George. And then he began to look at the bin differently. And then he spooned more foie gras into the bin. Then he spooned the bin. George Osborne spooned a bin. <laughs> he put his arms around the bin. He ran his fingers through its bin hair. He kissed a bin. He kissed the bin. George Osborne married a bin. <laughs> he married the bin, but he married it in a civil partnership. Because marriage is between a man and a woman, not, not a, a man, man and, and a, a bin. bin. <laughs> Everywhere that George went, people said, George married a bin. George married a bin. And George wondered why. Why do the people say this? I know he thought. It's because I married a bin. There uh, it is. This is that an one. example of our satirical, satirical tales, tales for, for children. children series. There they are. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we're going to. Thank you very much. Um, Go on then. I'm going to do just a couple more for you. Uh, something very short. Uh, you look vulnerable, said the Tory. That's it, that's that that's one done, That's very short, yeah. short that one. one's very short. <laughs> yeah, um, that one done. Tick. I like the Olympics. It means I can wave a flag without looking like a racist. Said the racist. Yes. That's that one. Yes. yes. Two ones. Two ones done. Two yeah. one. Robin's got uh, which international one now from Robin. Yeah. The Falklands, being British, is a horrible example of colonialism said the Argentine Premier Christine Fernandez Kirchner in Spanish. <laughs> That's a very uh, controversial international one. It's not a rally. It's not a rally. Yeah, this it's, is it's not, not a, rally. a rally. It's not a rally. This yeah. is not a rally. It's not a rally. Um, we're going to go on to... Uh, we've just got a few more uh, of yeah. these satirical tales for children. Uh, why do people in PR have such a bad reputation? Just, just putting it's that just out there. Thought. Just a question. It's just a thought. <laughs> just a question. Um, it's a question. I love working in the creative industries. It's just so creative. Said the man, failing to come up with another word, word for, for creative. Word, yeah. um, Imagine wank, that's the word. Happens yeah. a lot. In creative industry. Films. And we've got another one. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that sometimes things are just 
incredibly random. So random. And you don't know why, but they're just really random. Oh my god, oh I my can't god, believe so how random. random it is. This is I can't believe it. I saw you here at Machu Picchu. Just to, just to say, by the way, uh, in this story, Charlie is playing a teenage girl with the voice of Bob Dylan. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe I saw you here at Machu Picchu in Peru. I recognized you because you're wearing the same Levis hoodie as me. Oh my god, I can't believe it. So random. Oh my god. Almost as if, despite travelling halfway across the world, she'd failed to escape her demographic. <laughs> she might have had more success to es in escaping her demographic by going somewhere more local, like Hull. Just, yeah, just to say, um, that is actually, uh, we're sponsored by Hull City Council in their latest tourist campaign, Go, Go to, to Hull. Hull. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, it's it. lovely to be here at the Lost Hello. Lectures. Yeah, this thanks. is Robin. Hi. <laughs> oh. This is, uh, this is Charlie Partridge. Give him, come Hello, on. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And together we are Robin, Robin and Partridge. Partridge. And when, we, that when way, we yeah. say it's lovely to be here, we're comedians, by the way. Yeah. It's really lovely to be here. And when we say that, we really mean it. Because here are some of the other gigs that we've had, despite being comedians. One, um, was the, uh, one of the most recent gigs we had, Robin. Uh, cake decoration for the under sevens. Cake decoration for the under sevens. Uh, a porridge awareness tour of the southeast of England for we, the under sevens again. For the under yeah. sevens. We went to Bournemouth. Yeah. Um, but don't worry, recently did headline the Ministry of Sounds only yeah. festival for the under 12s. Yes. Lollipop yeah. festival. Lollipop festival. Lollipop festival. That was a big festival. Um, Comedians. Comedians. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've, we've also just come back from the Edinburgh Festival. Uh, we came back from the Edinburgh Festival where we were doing an art installation for children, um, which was child generated content. Um, so the children um, produced uh, stories, pictures, reviews to go on the wall, and it was all published in a newspaper, and I'd just like to read for you now one of our favourite reports um, from a new show we did every day from a reporter called Alex, who was age 11, and he wrote this. this Newsflash. It's uh, Random Craziness by Alex, age 11. Oh, that is a typo. He's got his name that wrong. That's a typo. That's a typo, yeah. By Alex, age 11. Alex, Alex Sam. Alex Sam, age 11. Yeah. <laughs> he much. is real. He is actually real. He is real. Um, random Craziness. According to our latest reports from Undercover Acorns, the world is not world-shaped. Despite mountains, loads of opposing evidence, and no real proof, we've concluded the world, and possibly the entire universe, is the shape of a moustached potato wearing a bowler hat. I don't know where he got that idea from, Charlie, no. <laughs> um, my super-advanced computer, a calculator that has run out of battery, is currently attempting to formulate the precise shape of a moustache potato wearing a bowler hat, but has had no luck. If you have any suggestions, breakthroughs, or mouldy grapefruit juice, please contact Professor Bonkersly Crazy, No Elephants, Four and a Half Backwards Street, Mars. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam, age Sam, 11. Age 11, there, there he is. That's um, his story. Now, uh, as comedians, self-deprecation is important, isn't it, Robin? It's very important. I would do my self-deprecation, but I'm not any good at it. Oh, he went there! Yeah, believe Come it. Come on! It's a joke. That's a joke um, for you. And we were actually doing some self-deprecation earlier when we were talking about our work with children, because uh, in entertainment uh, and as comedians, often there is a stigma attached to working with children. Um, yeah, it's considered uh, usually like you're talking to a less advanced, less capable audience. And what we were doing in Edinburgh was trying to contradict that by doing a newspaper produced by children for everyone, rather than one produced by adults for kids. Um, and when you put kids in control of their own newspaper, they come up with some pretty interesting stories. Uh, the children demanded that the front page of our first newspaper uh, ran the story that children are not being listened to enough. They said they're fed up of being told things like, in a minute, have a biscuit, come back when, when I'm not watching Match of the Day. Stay at your grand's. Stay at your grand's. Play in some sand. Yes. Ride that dog. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Children are demanding to be listened to. So, uh, fair enough, you might say. The kids want to be listened to. What's in it for us? Yeah, what's in it for us, apart from, apart from uh, listening to kids and probably giving them more self-confidence, and they will ultimately run this world. Uh, but what's in it for us now? What's in it for us what's now? What's in it for us now? More specifically. Um, well, people say don't work with kids and uh, animals. Um, in our experience of working with children, they're much better improvisers and much better storytellers than adults. And that's because they take creative risks. Yes, creative risks. So when we did the Circle of Trust earlier, a lot of people were very hesitant 
very unsure about joining in. Probably some of you were sat next to people that didn't join in at all. They're worried about looking silly. There's an editor in their head that goes, we can't do this. If you ask children to do that sort of stuff, they just throw themselves right in. In fact, uh, if we ask one of you to get on stage now and make up three jokes, I doubt there'd be very many volunteers, maybe. except for maybe a very drunk man who mainly wanted to expose himself. Um, yeah. That does but happen a we lot, asked but... uh, Ime, aged four, to do just that, and within seconds she was on stage and she made up three uh, very excellent jokes. Would you like to hear Ime's jokes? Yeah, come on. Okay, jokes by Ime, aged okay, four. This Number is, one. This is the first cracker. What do you call a shark with no fin? I don't know. Whoa. What do you call a shark with no fin? A no fin shark. Boom, obviously. she went there. Boom. That's the she first did it. one. She did it. Believe. Joke number She's two. She's four. What do you call a bird with no fish? I don't know. What do you call a bird with no fish? Birdfish poo. Obviously. Ha! Yes. It's like Eddie Izzard. And uh, the final one. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Jellyfish. Jellyfish who? Sting you. It's a surprise. Yes, a surprise. Very good. It's they were surprise. the jokes by Emmy, H4. H4. Well done, Emmy. <laughs> and Il uh, Emmy was not unusual in being bold, um, going straight to the front of the stage and making stuff up on the spot um, in a way that adults don't do, in our experience. Uh, as often, certainly. Um, but it's not just anecdotal evidence we want to uh, push in your face. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where that turn of phrase came from. And we've also got <laughs> statistics from the godfather of talks on education. It is Ken Robinson. Ha, ha, uh, ha, 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 and Robinson. Um, uh, I'm going to go through a talk, uh, some of his... Uh, he's collated some results on uh, divergent thinking. Uh, divergent thinking is uh, when you answer questions uh, with uh, many, many answers, many, many possible answers, as opposed to convergent thinking, which is answering questions with just one answer, like, what is two plus two, four? There's a definite answer to that, as opposed to questions like, what can you do with a brick? There are many answers Build a to wall. That. Build a wall. What can you do with a brick? Throw it through a window. Throw it through a window. What can you do with a brick? Uh, make a short step for a tiny child. What can you do with a brick? Put it on your head and what pretend can you to do be with a, a brick? Cement. cement. You can throw it through your own window to Whoa, create... Whoa, Robin, an... this is not a rally. Yeah, this okay. is not a rally, yeah, Robin. Okay. Thanks, thanks, man. You were thinking about the Argentinians mm. again, weren't you? Yeah, I don't know yeah, why I arbitrarily We're going to go back to the results. That, yeah. It's not a rally. I'll just go through these very quickly. Uh, so, what, in, the, uh, in, the, in these divergent studies, they set a threshold above which, if you scored a certain amount, uh, you were declared... a uh, divergent thinking genius. genius. Uh, three to five-year-olds, 98% of them came out as uh, divergent thinking geniuses. The same children were followed for the next 10 years, tested every five years. You can see there is a decrease in uh, how, much, uh, di how many divergent thinking geniuses there are in the group. And then the final group, 25 plus, was a different study, but it uh, came out with the result that only 2% of uh, adults demonstrate divergent thinking genius. So... Uh, in terms of divergent thinking, children demonstrate more genius than adults. So, rather yeah. than you stigmatizing, stigmatizing us for, for working, working with kids, kids, kids should, should stigmatize, stigmatize us for, for working, working with, with you. you. Yeah. yeah, working with you lot. With your mortgages. And your houses. Yeah. And your trousers. Yeah. And your shirts. Yeah. And your lack of play suits. Yeah, this is not a rally, Robin. This, this is not, is a, not rally. a rally. It's not a rally, this but it will become rally. one afterwards. Um, so what are we saying, Robin? The point is, uh, in our experience over the last four years of working with kids, kids are really, really annoyed about not being listened to. And when you do listen to them, they come up with some very interesting ideas. And it's about giving the safe space in which they can do that. Um, and on that note, Charlie would like to finish um, by reading you his favourite story um, from... Is it Emma, Charlie? It's from... Emma, yes, age 10. So consider this a little bedtime story um, to go home with, with from Emma, um, age 10. Ladies and gentlemen, Emma, age 10! Yeah! Hooray. Go on, Charlie. The Orangutan's Custard Cream by Emma, age 10. One day, Bill the Orange Primate, who happened to be an orangutan, found a custard cream in his tree. He was just about to take a bite when a huge flying ostrich swooped down and grabbed it out of his feet. Bill the orange primate uses his feet when eating quite a lot. Quickly, Bill jumped onto his hover scooter and zoomed after the flying ostrich till he got to the lair of the evil bird. Hey, Bill shouted, give that back. Actually, I can't eat this anyway because I can't eat solids, replied the ostrich. <laughs> Detail. Because Bill was a kind monkey, 
he said, well, why don't you have the cream and I'll have the biscuit? Oh, oh, we that's can nice, share. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay, said the ostrich. Show they sh show? So sure. they shared the custard cream and they all lived happily ever after. Until they went back in time and got squished by an iguanodon. The end! Yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I suppose our message is uh, listen to kids. We've, We've been, been Robin, Robin and Partridge. Partridge. Good, Good night! night. Bye. <laughs>